I want to share a little bit more about uh, progress monitoring and intrusive practices that I apply to my English 100 course, in particular, the practices I apply during the first three weeks. Um, in my class, the first three weeks are really all about um, introducing them to the, the flow of the course, uh, setting expectations, and supplying resources for how they can succeed in the class. Um, it's a, there, there's a, a, a primary focus on community building, um, 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 individuals feeling that they uh, have a space in the course and that they can participate fully. Um, and then um, diving into concepts that are rigorous and that are foundational for the outcomes for the course, um, but, but facilitating interaction with those rigorous concepts within collaborative activities, in particular, um, um, synchronous meetings and or alternate assignments um, 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 that, that offer a um, equivalent experience with collaboration. So we zoom in a little bit on week one. The assignments ask students to commit to completing the course. And I, I invite them to this commitment by first sharing with them what to expect about the course, um, by sharing resources that um, um, will equip them to succeed in the course. And then I provide an icebreaker activity in which students introduce themselves to their classmates and also state the reasons why they have decided to commit to the course. Um, during this first week, I encourage collaboration by assigning um, responses, replies to discussions. But in my class, my English 100 online class, I make these uh, required responses flexible, meaning they only they, they need to uh, complete 25 replies, um, but they, they have until the end of the term to do so. This encourages students to engage when they're interested um, and to feel free to disengage uh, uh, when they're either busy or they don't feel they have anything uh, 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 authentic to contribute to a discussion. Um, the real sort of low stakes of this first week's assignments um, are, are to allow folks to just meet each other. That's really the outcome goal. So during this first week, what I'm doing is I am responding to every single one of uh, my students' intro posts, right? So their statement of why they're committing to their class and their introduction to themselves. Um, and in this space, as I'm reading through their introduction posts, I'm tracking notes um, based on what they are expressing and divulging about themselves, um, as well as notes about what I'm hearing being expressed in terms of how busy a student might be or how worried, etc. Based on this information I, I document, um, I will also uh, uh, invite students to uh, a conference with me if I feel like their posts are a little too short, or if I notice their posts aren't hitting the deadlines, um, or if they're just expressing uh, worry, concern, or an overly busy schedule. Um, this allows a one-on-one -on -one situation in which students can ask for clarification. I can encourage students. I can point to more specific resources based on specific uh, and individual needs. Um, I'm also keeping track of the number of discussion responses during this first week, uh, just as a sort of a, um, a routine um, of giving points, but also documenting how often and frequently students are participating. During the second week, um, we are shifting from meeting one another and introducing ourselves to the course to really starting to dive into concepts. Um, so one really key assignment that helps with my monitoring process is I ask students to keep journal notes and reflections on all of the lecture content as well as a majority of the readings. Students can pick which readings they want to respond to. Um, these notes really help me to monitor their engagement with content. Um, um, I don't read these too carefully or too closely. It's more of a quick skim to make sure that their journals are populating. Um, but if students are posting their journal uh, uh, notes or reflections late, or they're contributing very short entries. This is another way that I can um, um, uh, track information that allows me to intervene uh, meaningfully um, based on an individual level. Um, in this second week, we are discussing concepts. So the uh, rigor of discussion ratches up uh, to, to a certain extent. Um, and really in this moment, uh, the responses students are engaging with 
are a, um, a window into how each one is navigating that liminal space, right? Certain students are emerging as leaders, other students are asking questions, um, some are simply still kind of responding to each other on a personal level, um, um, recognizing shared interests or shared experiences, so relationships are forming. And so I'm using all this information to add to my um, spreadsheet um, and to reach out to students where I feel um, um, I can, I can in intervene uh, in beneficial ways. Um, and finally, in week three, this is where we really start to move towards major assignments. So we begin to draft the first major essay. Um, we'll have our first peer review workshop. Um, and so near the beginning of this week is when I set up a synchronous meeting in Zoom um, um, because I feel that this is a just-in-time strategy where students will want information about the prompt, they'll want to ask questions about the first three weeks and these sort of foundational assignments that we're just getting used to. Um, um, and so, um, and or also I'll, I'll assign an alternate assignment where students can watch the, uh, uh, a recording of that meeting, interact with activities that, that I will uh, set up for them, and then I'll get a, a similar opportunity to hear questions from them if, if they have, have any. Um, what's really important as an intervention strategy during this, first week, this third week um, is that I'm starting to showcase student work. Um, I'm using discussion posts from the week before um, to uh, um, show off students who are really solid uh, uh, in their understanding of concepts or who are modeling writing that, that uh, um, um, sort of uh, meets this, the requirements of the essay in terms of paragraph structure or clarity or cohesion. Um, and what I'm doing when I'm showcasing work is I'm either including it in an announcement for week three or I'm embedding it in a lecture maybe about paragraph structure or it's going to be the centerpiece of our zoom session when we start to think about examples of what this first essay should look like and what I'm doing to choose that work is relying on the the monitoring techniques I have been engaged with up until week three. Um, and in particular, I'm trying, I am identifying students who um, may be uh, um, 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 not participating as frequently as their peers or who may have expressed some uncertainty about the class. I'm targeting them to showcase their work because this is a moment where I can really foster leadership. Um, instead of relying on voices or performances that um, um, are really thriving in this space based on past experiences in education, I want to find students and really showcase and highlight them um, to invite them into the rhythms of this academic space, um, to, to spotlight their voices, uh, to inter introduce a diversity to uh, how language can be crafted and how logic can be uh, structured. Um, and in particular, I'm also identifying students who are traditionally in our disproportionate impact groups. Um, um, uh, 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 in my class, based on my data, those are black students and Latinx students. So if in week three, um, I can spotlight them, I can encourage them, I can, I can affirm them, and I can start to uh, work with them as leaders in the course, um, which is very good for them individually, but very good for us as a community. Um, my favorite thing is in the journal notes that follow this week is when students are spotlighted, they're stoked. <laughs> so if I've, as I have explored these intrusive practices uh, in my own classes, I've found these questions to be helpful uh, uh, in orientating my strategies. So first of all, once I have information about my students' progress, what is it that I want to do for them? Um, and in particular, for whom and why for that particular student? Why not that for another student? This is how I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about equity and trying to increase equity in my classes. And so how, how are the intervent, intervention practices that I am practicing now, um, how do they apply in equity mindedness? Have I thought through that? Um, um, and where is there an opportunity for me to increase equity as I, as I, I move to intervene?